Just yesterday, I got to learn exactly why people hate AT&T customer service so much. And after my experience, I'm pretty sure it's not really the AT&T customer service, the people aspect, it's more of a lack of empowerment. The people that work at AT&T literally just can't deviate from their policies, as so it would seem, and so that creates this atmosphere where they are literally, uh, their hands are bound and they can't help you even though they would want to. And the people I spoke to genuinely seemed like they wanted to help, but they were, but they were very restricted on what they could do because they had to follow certain protocols and procedures before they could actually help me with my problem. And this also extends to some of the techs that actually come out to your house um, to help with. I actually spoke to one yesterday and he genuinely wanted to help with my problem, but he couldn't really do anything because he was also hand tied uh, due to like corporate policies and stuff like that. So what exactly was the problem? So on Friday at 4 p.m., roughly 4 p.m., a line was cut by some construction workers uh, from AT&T that comes into the entire neighborhood. So the entire neighborhood had lost their internet service. And AT&T linemen came out and they worked till maybe 11 p.m. into the night trying to get these fiber cables lined back up and fixed. And for the most part, they did finish their job, or at least so they thought. It turns out they only fixed like one half of the neighborhood or one side, one half of the street that I live on, actually not the neighborhood, but one half of the street I live on and most of the houses on the back end of the neighborhood, but all of the houses towards the front of the neighborhood did not have internet service. So that left about nine to 10, maybe 12 houses tops without internet service, me being one of them and my neighbors around me. So Saturday comes around, you know, where no one still has internet, so people start calling, and you would think that once you get more than you know, a handful of phone calls, there obviously must be an outage of this neighborhood, but no, 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 that is not the case. So I called AT&T and I knew that they had uh, been repairing the line and I let the customer service know that, hey, they're repairing the line, something is still wrong, but they did not listen or it felt like they didn't listen. They're like, I'm sorry, the best we can do is send out a tech and you'll have to wait till Tuesday for the tech to come verify that there's a problem, even though the lady on the line was able to verify that she could see that there was a connection problem between them and us. And she knew that it looked like, in the, her, from her experience, that it was probably a cut line or something was unplugged somewhere. But they still had to send out a tech to verify this even though I had explained the entire story of, well, you know, there was construction, the line was cut, the lineman came out and repaired it, but they must have not um, done it correctly. Didn't care, so whatever. I was like, I'll just wait till Tuesday. Well, I went back and started looking through my camera footage. I noticed that there were four different AT&T techs that came into my neighborhood to, I guess, try and help people with their service. And so I called AT&T again and was like, hey, I'm reporting an outage, I have, Four, there's been already four vehicles that have come to my neighborhood and you know my neighbors I actually went and talked to my neighbors and they still don't have internet something is wrong here and the tech on the line was like well it's not an outage if you and a couple of neighbors don't have it and no one's calling to report it and I was like that's not true because I know of at least four people that have called to report it to include some of my direct neighbors who I spoke to so in total, there was about nine total people that at least called to complain, me being one twice. So it would have been actually 10, but that's fine. We'll just say nine. So nine people that I know of called. There were three neighbors that I wasn't able to talk to because they probably weren't home or whatever the deal was, but I'm guessing their internet was out also. So when you have like nine to you know 12 people who have probably called about this, to me that sounds like an outage even though according to their terminology, that's not an outage or whatever. And he absolutely refused to have like a lineman come out to come take a look at the problem. He said, I was just gonna have to wait for my regular scheduled appointment, which was absolutely ridiculous. But after all that being done and said, I actually, uh, the last, I guess, tech to come out, I bum rushed him while he was helping my neighbor out because my neighbor texted me, he's like, hey, my guy's here, my tech is here, to." fix my internet, uh, maybe he'll be able to fix yours too. So I ran out there and I went to talk to him and I was like basically begging him to help me out as well. And you know, he was a little reluctant at first, but he actually, you know, tried to help out and he did get my internet and my neighbor's internet working. 
and one other house on my street. So he went above and beyond the Call of Duty to get our internet working. And I was like incredibly thankful for him. And well, if you're watching this video, which I highly doubt, thank you so much for getting my internet working. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to fix some of the other houses' um, internet, their connection that wasn't working. And he verified that at the terminal, it looked like things were not plugged in correctly and people were getting internet who, the houses aren't even finished being built yet, so their connections are live, even though there's nothing there. And he actually was trying to fix connections and got a call from other AT&T techs saying, hey, we, I know you're out there at this neighborhood and my client's internet went down. Can you like check to see what's going on while you're out there? And so he knows there's a problem, but he too could not really call AT&T to get to escalate things to bring out a new set of crew or new linemen or whatever they're called to come look at his terminal and get things fixed up. He, he, his hands were also bound. He basically said that to the other people in our neighborhood that he wasn't able to fix that they will have to call AT&T and schedule their own appointments to have a tech come out and basically do what he did to put like a reception or some sort of like uh, device on one end of the fiber optic cable and another one to make sure to figure out what line is going to what. So basically like a cable tester, but that's not what it's called and I can't think of the name. But basically to find if where that live wire is on the terminal side. And I feel bad for some of my neighbors because they're gonna have to wait till Tuesday or Wednesday for their tech to come out because AT&T is apparently really overwhelmed with service calls at the moment. And I mean, that whole experience on its own is just wild. And I can't believe that even after having four different vehicles come out and clearly that's like showing a problem, that they still won't escalate things to be like, hey, there's obviously a serious problem in this neighborhood. Let's get some, you know, better equipped guys out there because the techs they send out there can't repair the fiber optic cables that are in the neighborhood. Those things are like huge and thick. They're not equipped. They need a whole team. Now, I wish I had footage of the actual guys that were staying out till 11 o'clock. I mean, there was like four trucks there. There was a whole team of guys working late into the night trying to get that working and even they could barely do it, and those guys are supposed to be the pros. So, like, how is sending a tech out, like, all he's gonna do is just, like, walk out and be like, yep, there's a problem here, there's nothing I can do about it, and go back home to AT&T, or back to, you know, his work, whatever, and I don't know, like, maybe escalate it from there, I'm not sure what the problem is. But what's funny is, like, from the video footage, you, there's, you can actually see two different AT&T people go and inspect the lines and then just kind of, leave because they weren't sure what to do I guess or maybe they were going to try and have somebody else figure it out but anyway it was a wild ride and actually like when I was talking to one of my neighbors and one another AT&T tech that was like way down the neighborhood passed by me to go inspect the lines too which was pretty funny and I, I'm not sure what came of that I have no idea if my other neighbors have internet but I do know after um, maybe about like six or seven houses down uh, my street, they all, everybody on the back side of the neighborhood does have internet and I have internet today. So anyway, just absolutely wild. Like <laughs> I can't believe AT&T doesn't empower their employees at all. And it's just, it just kills me because the people that I talked to, the texts that I talked to and the people on the phone, they genuinely felt like, or gave me the impression that they wanted to help and they understood my frustrations and, but they were just, it, they were basically trying to tell me their hands were tied without telling me their hands were tied or they were at gunpoint and without telling me that they were at gunpoint. And it's just, it's so sad to see that their ATT's customer service could be so much better if their employees are powered, empowered so they can make decisions on their own without the need for management or whatever their escalation process is. Because, I mean, at t could have saved a bunch of money by having one guy come out, inspect the lines, and determine that, yep, there's still a problem here after I gathered a bunch of my neighbors to ambush this one tech that came out. Like... They could have saved a bunch of time and money, but I guess when you're a billion dollar company and, you know, like in my neighborhood where you are the only provider, I guess it doesn't really matter because you're going to make your money no matter what because you've already paid off all the politicians you need to ensure that people are basically forced into your service. So I don't know. I'm not a business. I'm obviously not a successful businessman, so I don't know how to run a business. But if I was running a business and I had already sent two vehicles out to the same neighborhood, I would start to be highly suspicious after this third and fourth vehicle and five other people calling to complain that there was an outage. But, you know, that's that's just me. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this incredibly short video. Uh, there will be more to come in the future. Uh, so I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.